welcome back to SCANS Community Connections. Again, I'm your host, Tom Hayes, and I'm uh, happy to be with you again today. And for this segment of the show, we have another wonderful guest, and that's Autumn Dempsey. What an interesting name. Thank you. And Autumn is the Regional um, Program Coordinator for the Center for Diabetes Education and Nutrition at the Monmouth Medical Center and Monmouth Medical Center Southern Campus. Did I get that right? You did. Wow. It's a mouthful. Okay. It is. Well, that's great. Well, thank you for being here with us today Thank you SCAN. for having me. Uh, it's, it's great. Is this your first time at SCAN? Um, for this type of event, yes, but we've yeah. done lectures in the past. Wonderful. It's a great yes. organization. It really is. So, we might as well get right into this. Okay. So, tell us, what is, what is diabetes education? So, diabetes education is a service that we offer to people in the community, um, adults mainly, but we do have certain things designed for children as well where we educate people on how to better manage their diabetes at home. We give them all the tools that they need to hopefully help prevent any type of complications that could arise. And we focus on each person's individual goals as far as weight management, meal planning, exercise, glucose monitoring, and the list can go on and on. Um, but it is an outpatient program at Monmouth Medical Center and the Southern Campus. And um, we do um, see patients individually as well as group. Great. Now, if somebody's just interested in finding out if they have diabetes mm -hmm. or something, can they come to you just for something or are they referred by a doctor? Um, the patients that come to us are referred by their physician or it could be a nurse practitioner. Um, we don't do any diagnosing, so okay. they would need to come with a prescription and that also ensures that their insurance company will cover the cost of the education. Great. So yes, they need to have some sort of a diagnosis to see Good. us. And I, I, I've heard over the years that like, diabetes seems to keep ramping up, right? Is it still climbing or, or are you seeing a plateau? Or? Uh, unfortunately, it is still climbing. Mm. There, um, with the obesity epidemic, um, you would think it being 2017, we would have a better handle on this. Um, currently, there's somewhere around 85 million people in the United States with prediabetes. Wow. That's an epidemic. Yeah. And, and our goal is to get the word out there give people the tools they need so we can get this under control before it becomes a bigger problem and harder to manage. Right, right, wow. Now, um, where are your programs located? So we have two locations now. We're in Long Branch at Monmouth Medical Center. That's our full-time office. We're there okay. Monday through Friday, and we just um, recently took over another program that was a little bit smaller, but we're hoping to grow that in Lakewood, New Jersey, at Monmouth Medical Center South, and that's um, a two-day-a-week program right now. Okay, great. That's, um, that's, that's great that you have those programs. And the, you say, what are the hours? Um, so in Long Branch, we see patients between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Okay. And in Lakewood right now, we're seeing patients on Tuesdays from 9 to 2 and on Thursdays from 9 to 4. Okay, great. And that's great. Now, when you have um, patients come in, do you often do, when you, when you think of education, mm -hmm. you think of like a class. Mm -hmm. Do you have many people or several people in a class, per se, or is it individual, or it varies depending on the, the it, it varies on the person's needs. We do try to sit down with each patient individually, one-on-one, -on -one, to kind of get a feeling for what their needs are. But we do offer group learning, which is great. It's a lot of fun. Um, we try to make it convenient hours. Um, and it can range. A group can be anywhere from four people to eight people. Um, but we always want it to be casual. Right. And we want people to actually enjoy being there. Right. So, but we do offer individual counseling for patients that may need that as well. Good. And I would imagine somebody may start as an individual patient and then go into the group setting a as time goes on. Absolutely. Because I, I would imagine at first you come in and you feel very personal, but mm -hmm. the good thing about a group setting is that you realize there's other people in the same boat, right? And exactly. now you're feeling comfortable and you're hearing the, what they're saying and you, you might get some like, different ideas or tips or whatever and, and you don't feel so alone with, with your illness and you know whatever comes with that. Exactly, right? and that's the goal. The goal is for people to know that they're not alone and to be around people they can identify with. Right. And, and it is fun to share ideas and, and tricks and tips that work or don't work. Right. Um, so, so there is really is a benefit to the classes, but again, it's not for everybody. And, and the beauty of it is that it doesn't have to be. We can offer you know, the individual counseling as needed. Yeah, that's, that's great. I th think that's wonderful that you have that program because, again, as, as I said, mm -hmm. you know, we know it's, it's, it's it is like an epidemic. It and really is. And that, that is that is a that is really tough, you know, because mm -hmm. it's it's hard because with diabetes, like you said, it often comes, you know, it's diet and it's you know weight gain and all those sorts of things. And you know, I often say like, 
why didn't nature just make it okay that we could just eat anything we wanted? Absolutely. Because life would be a lot more enjoyable. It would be. Just eat whatever you wanted and not have to worry about it. And it's interesting you say that because one of the things that we try to stress is that you can still enjoy food. You can still participate. You can still go out to dinner and on vacation. We're going to teach you how to do that. Do that in the way that you're not overeating, but you can still enjoy the foods that you like. Right. Maybe I have to come over before going on vacation. Absolutely. <laughs> We're there. Is there a cost for diabetes education and their medical nutrition therapy? Yes, there is a fee for our service. Um, and being that the, the patient does come with a prescription from the doctor, that's what deems it medically necessary. So most insurance companies pay for the cost of diabetes education and or nutrition. Um, we, res we have our accreditation through the American Diabetes Association, and that was something that we did back when we first opened the program. And being that we hold that accreditation, it allows us to bill Medicare, Medicaid, and the commercial insurances, and it also shows that we meet the standard, that we are meeting what they deem is, is necessary, the needs for the community. So being that we maintain that, we're able to bill for it, and it is covered, and then very rarely is there an out-of-pocket for the for the patient. That's great. And that accreditation, is that uh, is that like an annual? Do they come in every so often just to make sure or give you updates on what the oh, latest yes. is and all that good? Yes, okay. it's an annual. Um, annually, I have some requirements I need to do. And then the big accreditation, the big project that we have to submit, that's every four years Okay. for both sites. Which so. is good. I mean, it, it's a lot of work, I'm sure, on your side. Mm -hmm. But it's important so that your clients know that you've got the Absolutely. latest and up to date. Absolutely. And that you're, you know, you didn't just get the, the certificate at the beginning 15 years ago or whatever, and now you're just running Correct. muck. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Which you never would, and I know would, you, the organization you're affiliated with would <laughs> never do that. But in general, that's always Absolutely. good for people to have that comfort level, right? So what are the roles of the, of the RN and the RD um, in terms of the diabetes e educators? So I'm a registered nurse and a certified mm -hmm. diabetes educator. And as the program coordinator, my roles are a little bit different than what um, Lauren, who's my dietitian. She's a registered dietitian and also a certified diabetes educator. She also has tons of other certifications, too. Okay. I could list them. She's wonderful. Um, but our roles do vary. We both interact with patients, we both educate, we both counsel. Um, my responsibilities are more for curriculum development and maintaining um, a certain standard of care and quality, um, as well as reporting um, you know, certain outcomes, um, not only to our organization, but as well as the American Diabetes Association. Mm. Um, so we do vary in our licensing, but we work together to give kind of like the perfect picture of, of diabetes. You know, you get the nurse and the dietitian, so you get the best of both worlds. Uh, that's great. That's great. Um, so what um, populations do you serve in general? So um, the largest um, group that we serve is, is adults. Um, we see adults um, with type 1, type 2, prediabetes, or gestational diabetes. Now, can you give me a little idea or give us all an idea mm -hmm. of what those different levels mean? Sure. So um, type 2 diabetes is, is what we kind of tradition, traditionally thought of as adult diabetes or okay. older age diabetes I hear sometimes, um, whereas type 1 diabetes used to be called juvenile and still is called juvenile diabetes, but there are some young adults that can be diagnosed. Um, so it's type 1, and really the big difference is type 1 diabetics need insulin. They need insulin to survive. Whereas a type 2 diabetes, um, the groundwork's a little bit different. We focus more on the nutrition and the weight management versus the medication management. So simply put, that's probably the biggest difference and the easiest for people to sort of identify with. Whereas gestational diabetes is diabetes in pregnancy. And that's mm, something that okay. can happen. Um, it's, a, it's a state of pregnancy. It, it goes away once you have your baby. Um, and that's all done on an individual level. We meet with those moms one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a group. Um, because the needs it's vary, and it's a little bit, it's, yeah. a, it's a different, it's and the a fact different that it's learning. sort of temporary. It's stuff, temporary, so, yeah. and there's also a little bit of anxiety involved, mm. so we have to make sure that we're meeting that mom's needs. Right. Um, and pre-diabetes is pretty much, you know, what a lot of people have, and is You're linked to brink. more, we're on the brink, you know, if, I, I went to a seminar once, and it said, if your belly hangs over your pants, then you're, most likely pre-diabetic, and, and that's a population that, world, as we all do. Everybody's <laughs> sucking in their stomachs right and, now. And that's really um, nutrition focused, right. um, and really getting people to, to get this under control so that they can, you know, prevent any complications down the road. Right, right, wow. We that's also see, and, and we also do have a pediatric program, and that pediatric program is specifically geared towards 
pediatric and adolescent weight management. We do have a pediatric obesity epidemic in this country as mm. well. Um, that's done and on an individual. Pediatric is what kind of age group? Um, well, we see children as young as two up to um, 17. You know, once they're 18, they can see us in the adult okay. practice. Um, but it, it's pretty much from two years old and up. That's the okay. youngest that we've had in our program. Gotcha. Um, and that's really about just teaching the family good habits. Nobody's there because because they're doing something bad. Right, it's right. just about learning what we can maybe do a little bit different. Much better. And I know a lot of a lot of issues seem to be related to the actual food that's available. And mm -hmm. you know, if you're on a tight budget, sometimes you're eating less quality food and a Absolutely. lot of sugars in it and a lot of carbs and all that sort of thing, Correct. right? So Correct. trying to get yep. people to understand you know, it might be better to spend a little bit more mm -hmm. to get a better quality or try to eat something different than, you know. And that's what it is, and portions. Yes. It's portion control. You know, yeah. we could still eat the foods that we can afford, and mm -hmm. we don't have to spend a lot of money, but we have to practice good portion control and getting active. Yeah, You right, know, getting right. out there and moving, and for the kids, that's the biggest. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's so important. And, you know, getting exercise is not always that complicated. You could walk around the block Absolutely. or go to a park somewhere, you know. And, and, and dance and in your that, living room. Dance in your living room, yeah, that's, yeah. that could be a lot of fun. It could be. <laughs> so um, what are some examples of some positive <coughs> outcomes that you've had with your patients? So um, I do like to measure certain outcomes because I find them to be the most helpful and um, they're rewarding for the patient as well. So one thing that we, of course, monitor is weight. You know, people come in, um, I could say in the last 10 years, I don't think anybody's gained weight in our program, so that's a good thing. Yeah. They're usually losing weight. Sometimes it's five pounds. We've had people lose 50 pounds, 60 pounds. You know, it just depends on what their needs are. So weight, weight loss is a big one. Um, that gets people in the door. They want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. There's something else that we monitor closely, and that's called the hemoglobin A1C, which is a blood test that the physician would order. And it's a three-month average of the person's blood sugar 24-7. Mm. It's not fasting. It's not necessarily after eating. It's a really, really good picture of what's been going on. So we like to monitor those. Um, usually every four months, we ask the patient to have them done. And we've seen reductions of up to 2%, which is good. Wow, that's, that is that's great. That's a great um, outcome as far as A1C reduction is concerned. And of course, um, treatment satisfaction, self-empowerment, quality of life, those things are, are hard when you have diabetes because it's not so black and white. Right. And what works for one doesn't work for the other. And you could be giving it 110% and still not necessarily be meeting your goals. So right. when we're able to help people kind of get over that hurdle, yep. that's probably one of the best outcomes to say. Gotcha. Now we're closing down here, okay. um, but what's a phone number that folks can reach out to you? Sure. So if anybody's interested in, in getting in touch with any of the educators, um, I can be reached, or Lauren, at 732-923-5025, and that's the Center for Diabetes Education and Nutrition at Monmouth Medical Center. Great. Thank you, Autumn, for your thank time. Thank you so Appreciate much for having me. good work. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers. So if you're over 65, like me, and active and fairly healthy. Being active and healthy alone will not protect you. Remember, the immune system weakens with age. And if you're over 65, ask your doctor about your vaccination options. We want you to be healthy and active. Hello, and welcome back to SCAN's Community Connections. Again, I'm your host, Tom Hayes, and I'm happy to say we have another wonderful guest for this segment of the show. We have the lovely and talented Kathy Collins, who's the Executive Director of Mammoth Cares. And welcome, and thank, thank you for being you. here. I'm happy to be here. Oh, it's great. Now, Kathy, you and I serve on the Human Services Advisory Council right. together for, for several years. And I always want, I do want to tell you that you're, you always have wonderful input there. You're a oh, very well, obviously you. intelligent person. Thank you. But now that I'm reading some more information about right. what we're getting ready for today, I yeah. feel like I realize you're even more talented than I even, even imagined, which I didn't think was possible, but well, thank you. here you I, are right before I'm, us. I'm all. happy to brag about what I do. Yeah, so. that's great. Right. So uh, the first question is about, you know, in re reference to, you know, your, your work. Um, New Jersey is the only state um, that has a um, ca countrywide or countywide and statewide has a children's system of care. Yeah. So tell us exactly what that means. A system of care is, a, is an agreement that all the child serving agencies that for us in New Jersey, it's the mentally ill child. 
um, they, we make an agreement to all work according to the same values and the same principles and the same model of practice. And there are lots of systems of care around the country, but New Jersey has decided to make the entire state subject to this, this partnership that we have. So we have 15 areas, Mammoth has one, where we all work together in, according to a set of principles that put the child and the family in the middle of a whole array of services that we create for each family. Wow, that's great. I know. It, I, you, it, you'd be happy to be from New Jersey from, yes. from this point of view. I was going to say, what I know, a wonderful it's, thing no, for it's New a, Jersey. It's wonderful. Why aren't we t we're talking famous. about that more? We're famous. Yeah. Yes, that's right. really great. And we're the only state that yes, has that. Yes, we're the wow, only state. And states come to visit us to learn how to do it. That's great. Yeah. That's yeah. really great. Now, um, so you you obviously you are the executive director of Mammoth Cares, yes. an organization that deals with with families and all right. that, right? So, um, how does the family get qualified, or how do, how do they become part of the the you know Mammoth Cares family? Right. We, we uh, every child that we um, serve has a complicated mental health history. Oh. Then there are other stresses that the family has. So we work at tw on twelve life domains, twelve twelve areas that families can. Um, have stress in and if the more complicated the family the more they become our our family okay. because our care managers have low caseloads and just a 14 15 families per care manager and they work on all the needs that family might have so it's very individualized and very comprehensive okay. so we plan for we plan for whatever that family needs in the 12 life domains and we put together a team of everyone who loves that kid mm. professionally or personally or yeah. anyone the bigger the team, the better, and then we work on strategies to help with every one of those life domains. So every one of our kids has a, has a mental health diagnosis, and some of them have a substance abuse problem, some of them have an intellectual or, dis or developmental disability, and many of them are in juvenile justice or child welfare or special ed. I mean, so it's complicated. Families need a lot of um, sort of specific um, down-to-earth help, not just with the mental illness. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's that's impressive. It's 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 wonderful, and it's free to all the families. Any family we see, there's no cost. Wow. I know. That's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful. It's a great thing. thing it's you like created. a very, It's like a miracle. You say that to them, and they go, "Where's the catch?" No, yeah, and there's right. no catch. That's right. really nice. Yeah. So family members, doctors, all everybody that can be associated with this right. child, we try to pull in together. Yeah. Which is great because you know a lot of times a lot of other family members don't understand what's going on no. or whatever it might be. The fact you bring them in is going to help everybody. Right, and the family sometimes is reluctant, but we there we put them in charge. So they're in charge of their team. We're the we're the facilitator, and then they so they can pretty much work on what they need to work on, and they can preserve their privacy. They can pick who they want on their team. It the whole to to put it in a nutshell, the whole idea of a system of care is to upend the power relationship between the family and the providers. So the family gets to kind of run the show with advice from professionals. Right. But, and then so they can pretty much be in charge. And it unleashes like a lot of their energy and lowers their defenses. They have, you know, That's they test great. us out, but it's, and you get a whole lot done. Especially yeah. if everyone's in the same room at the same time, they can kind of call each other out. They can kind of say, you were supposed to do this, but you didn't do it. Or we need somebody to do this. Uncle Joe, can you do this? I mean, there's a whole dynamic that yeah. that changes. It's that's really great. nice. That's that's yeah. really wild. Yeah. So Mammoth Cares is called a care management organization. So yeah. is that all part of what this means to yes. be a? Yes. Okay. There, there are 15 of us th that cover every county in the state. And care management is different from case management. Case management is usually linking families up with services and saying good luck. What we mm. do is we, we, we actually advocate for them. We plan that we create new services that don't exist that might help that kid. We have access to resources and funding that can create new things that a kid, a, a kid might need school, uh, school clothes because, and that, and that can bring a whole lot of um, bad effect if a kid doesn't yeah, want to go right. to school. We can buy them school clothes. The peer pressure and all that, yeah. we're going in raggedy yeah. clothes. We, we don't have all these, these categories that stop us from, we can, cre we can find the right therapist for that family. And we, we hire them, we don't really hire them. We use Medicaid to pay them to come and be with the family. Okay. This is, yes, so um, we can do all sorts of creative things. Um, it's really fun. That's, that's great. Yeah, right. I mean, that's really amazing. I yeah. Mean, you know, I, I know there's a, there's a difficult world out there in mental health. And oftentimes, as you say, you mentioned like um, uh, addictions and all that. Yeah. A lot of times 
people are self-medicating because yeah. they're really not getting the help they need, and that's, that's exactly the only way right. they can deal with certain that's things. Right. And when you bring the right people into the room yeah. and at the table, you can get you can get rid of a lot of those issues. And or, that's our job yeah. is to get them at the table, and then we follow the the youth and the family wherever they go. Like if the child needs to be hospitalized or go into residential treatment, they stick. We the team we bring the team to the residential treatment center to have the meeting. That, that family is always sort of in in charge. So. It's so logical that it's almost crazy. <laughs> I know. People say 15 years ago when we all started, people go, oh, what a great idea. And now they go, well, yeah. What, yeah what, of I course. mean, well, of course. Why wouldn't you do it, you way, do it right? any other yeah. way? Right. That's so funny. So we have great outcomes because it's so logical if right. you do it right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. And so you, you say you do things through collaboration and mm -hmm. you have system partners, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Those are those people involved in that whole process or your system partners? or. Yeah. Or is that out over and, uh, and above? It's both. Okay. So w the kids that we get usually are involved with different systems, maybe child welfare, juvenile justice, special ed. And so we would, every kid has a school, so every kid has a school person on their team. You nice. know, So we, we bring in the ones that they're working with. Sometimes they have a probation officer or a, or a um, child welfare worker. or you know. So we bring them in, and they're part of the team doesn't mean that they do everything the family wants, but they right. represent their need in that team. But then we, we, we're really charged with changing the whole system of care for kids out in the community. So we work with the DCPMP, well that's child welfare. We work with juvenile justice. We have very close collaborations with the judges and the probation officers and the family court. We work with all the special ed schools. Yes. And to change how they do things so that the kids, we don't help one kid at a time. We mm -hmm. might help a lot of kids at the time. Nice. Policy changes, practice changes. It's efficient and yeah. it's good. Uh, that's it's what a system, it's a system, it's right, right, exactly. So um, it's hard because everybody yeah. was is, was sort of used to their silo, we yeah. call them. Yep. And now people have to, like they have to, collab we have to make collaborations to work for that one family. And so mm -hmm. where there's a lot of conflict, but the idea is that conflict will be be resolved and to the to the benefit of the family. Right, and yeah. that's that's the goal. And there's the a lot of there used to be a lot of turf protecting, mm. but we we kind of have been giving that up. Good. Yeah. So you're finding that people are working together better. Oh. And realizing that there is not they're not putting themselves in jeopardy by no, working with others and collaborating. No, because it, it's because if the kid's getting in trouble at the moment, we have the team probation officer might be the star of that team for that moment mm -hmm. you know and we might have to deal with the fact that the youth is getting in trouble but it's done as a team so someone can right. figure out a creative solution to why that kid's getting in trouble at three o'clock every afternoon you know, right so. right that's yeah, that's incredible and it's funny because you know being from a company that gives a lot to a lot of charities yes, and, and all that we we often look at collaborations as like that's just you just get more bang for the buck, like you know, and and you know all the nonprofits. Everybody's struggling for every penny they I can know, get. It's really tough these days, as it always is. Yep. But you know, when you do those collaborations, that's the other thing is that you can save money by working together oh. instead of recreating the wheel, or you know, or you get a lot more done. Yeah. Than just you know you're in your own little little. Well, when you're when all the helpers are in the same room, you sometimes can stave off some spinning out of control that that family might get into. So, um, and we've saved this is the bottom line for New Jersey. We've saved New Jersey millions and millions of dollars because we get kids back from residential treatment. We keep kids in our motto, well, our one of them is keep kids in school, at home, out of trouble. Right. So we get them out of detention fast if it's about their mental illness. We get them out of the, we follow them while they're in the hospital. Right. So there's tons of money that we save that that allows us to be able to give these services at no cost to the families because it's a bottom line it's a it's a win i have to send this uh, a copy of this to the to the governor's office and make oh, sure good. they really understand yes. that you're saving we do a lot need of money. a we do need a rate increase yeah. for our medicaid rate so yes. yeah so we'll we'll, we'll, <laughs> okay. we'll send this right over to all you. right okay um, so mama's cares is charged with increasing community resources for families as right. well so how do you accomplish that goal well, one th we have like three different ways. One is we have a, we have flexible funding that we can actually go out and buy a resource or get a youth um, hooked up to a resource that he, the family may not know about or may, may not be able to afford. So we can pay for all sorts of stuff for kids that will help them because sometimes it's not the mental health treatment that makes the difference. It's the support and the um, and the uh, connection to the community mm -hmm. that makes the youth feel like a normal kid, right? right so right. we can do that. We have a we have a website called the Mammoth Resource Net, 
and that's for the whole community and it's a website that has all of the resources that we can possibly find that anybody on the community would wait they want to look up housing they want to look up recreation they want to look up food banks we have it all in there um, so that we make resources more available to everybody Great. and then we also have small grants that we give to the community to target the needs that our kids might have okay. that are too small to really you know attract big grants and they're right. tailored to Monmouth County oh, that's great yeah so we've about a minute left okay and I know you started the health and wellness team at yes. Monmouth Care oh, yes. so if you can give us a quick synopsis oh, of I that I can do that record. that as part of um, Medicaid um, they w there's now available a what we call, we don't call it this, the behavioral health home. And that just means that kids that are getting help for their complex behavioral needs, they also have very complex medical needs. Mm. We've hired a nurse and a wellness educator to add to that kid's team. It's diabetes, asthma, um, epilepsy, um, obesity, any kind of complicated medical need that together with the behavioral health need, you got it's the whole kid. Yeah. And so we get to add those services to every team if there's that, if there's a diagnosis. That's amazing. It's amazing. We're one of the first counties too, to be able to do that. And that's the health and wellness? Health and wellness team, team. There is available to any child and family team that where there's a complex medical need. And you're the first organization to have that? There are four, in the, four counties in the state. It's going to be statewide eventually. Right. Yeah. Amazing. That is so much fun. Again, common sense. Yep. Like who would have thought? Now we have it all in one place. From now on, I'm, I'm going to call you Kathy Common Sense <laughs> okay. Collins. That's great. <laughs> Better than a lot of other things. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, okay. I really want to thank you for oh, your time. You're you are wonderful. And you okay. really are spectacular. I hope our, our audience really <laughs> realizes how spectacular you are. Right. But and. I, um, and we'll have a we'll have something put up that has the phone number that they can call if yes. they're interested. Yes. Okay. Right. Very okay. good. Thank you very much for your You're time. Welcome. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you to our listeners. Hope to see you again soon.